Hello and welcome to Artist Express. Today our guest is Paul Alexander, a visual artist who is a recent transplant to Salina. Uh, glad to have you with us, Paul. Thank uh, you. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the work you do and how you began your journey as an artist? Um, I don't know. I think I started like any other kid. Uh, every kid you notice, no matter what profession they go into later on in life, they all start out drawing. Everybody's kids is a young age, sitting there with the crayons, coloring. I think I just started that way, uh, mimicking, you know, what you see. Yes. Uh, it did help that Dad was a sculptor and an artist. <laughs> oh, I think that would uh, create a nice atmosphere for this kind of growth. <laughs> yeah, Mom, Mom did Ikebana, which is Japanese flower arranging. Yes. It's a little bit more of a 3D live sculpture because it's yes. a living a living thing. But yeah. very much uh, concerned with line and form, so Oh yeah, it would yeah, be. it has to be perfectly right. lined up and uh, and you only look look at it from the front. Right. So it's uh So what was your what's the first experience that comes to mind for you that made you think maybe I want to do this always? Ooh, yeah, I don't think that ever came up. I I think just as a young kid you just you just do it, uh -huh. even if people are saying, well, you're so creative. Like, I don't know what that means. I just like... <laughs> I like to make stuff. <laughs> I just like to make stuff, yeah. Um, and it, it never went away. It's like a burning desire that... Uh, I hate to say that it's like a drug, but it, it, once you get going uh, and He's, you finish a piece, right. you just put it aside and you're like... And you're ready And to you do just keep going one. and you completely forget yes. the, the first piece you did. Now your mind's all about the second yes. one. And if you can do better, how do I improve it? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and generally, would you say... Now, what the work you've brought today are paintings. Mm -hmm. um, is that your primary focus, painting then, or do you do other kinds of work as well? Well, um, I did so much sculpture back in, in school um, based on the skeleton. Everything I learned is from the skeleton, how, you know, how to live, how to dress, how to eat, how to walk, like your whole persona. Everything uh -huh. about you was through a three-dimensional process. So when you're doing a painting, you're constantly thinking of the weight of that center object, say, uh, or, or your main your main star, let's say, in a movie, uh -huh. and then your background is right. your supporting cast and the, the atmosphere, and and it just goes on and on. How right. much how much are you painting? But um, but since uh, learning through the bones, I mean, we did uh, every bone in your body yes. uh, like a uh -huh. hundred times, full scale armatures. Yes. Um, life-size skeletons and I did drawings from memory that show the, the framework and the wire work and always working on that 3D so that when it came to a flat surface and doing the painting um, you're able to build a three-dimensional structure and what, who, whatever viewer who, whoever they are looks at it they can put themselves right. in there and there's and depth. walk around. Yeah. yeah, walk around. You're blowing up that room. Like Leonardo always, you know, gave notes on saying, um, you know, fuzz out the background, uh, let the color drop and gradate so uh -huh. many degrees so that you can get a beautiful That's atmosphere and, and, you know. Now, all you those mentioned things. school. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell what schools you went to that? Oh, I only, I only went to one, really. I did go to the Art Institute in Chicago, but I kind of already knew everything there was to know when I showed up because I had did all the bones so when I took I and actually that was high school work then? well high when school I won a scholarship work? that sent ah. me to the school so I took anatomy and painting I see. and when I got there I oh, I shouldn't say this but I knew more than the teacher <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was instructed by my master George Sotos at the drawing workshop just keep your mouth shut <laughs> they don't need to know how and why you know it um, just be humble and, and, you know, don't say anything. Uh -huh. Just do what you do and let them do what they do. Right. And uh, get the contacts sure. because they're, they're contacted with everybody all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, so you wanted to do that. So I went in there. She put the model on the model stand, put the skeleton next to it and said, I want everyone to draw the skeleton in the model's position, which was very contorted. I was the only one in the class who could do it because I, I did it every day at my other school. Right. So this is easy as pie. Hey. It <laughs> sounds as if you were really fortunate to have that kind of background. 
Oh, I, I was. Mean, uh, I was. And it's underneath. It's the, right. it's the structure of right. everything I do and how I think when I do my pieces now. I, I would say the hardest thing now is just converting. When, when we did uh, paintings in school, we did them uh, out of oil. Yes. And just black and white studies to learn hues right. and stuff. No color, no nothing. Right. Just, the value. just the old school yeah. Renaissance uh -huh. way of learning. <laughs> and so, um, so I would do that. So when I transferred over from oil uh, to the color and the latex, oh, what a headache. It, the color shift. Yes. If, if people don't know what color shifting is, you have a color and it's wet. And when you apply it, let's say like this light gray, by the time it dries, it's more like this gray yes. way over here and you're going what is that so you have to work super fast uh -huh. you have to kind of anticipate the paint um, and you have to mix enough knowing how much uh, surface you have to cover like how much volume is it from the chin all the way right. to the collarbone there how much of that gray do I need um, because yeah, a lot you're not going to mix it the same again right and in yeah. oils it could sit out all day oh, right <laughs> you got less than five minutes to put this down mm -hmm. um, so I had to try to get used to that and my teacher even said I, I don't know how you do it I can never use them Hmm. And I never will. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Well, now, I know that viewers are going to be uh, curious. Can you talk a little bit about the inspiration for this painting? Uh, well, this piece here is called The Third Eye. Um, basically, what I was thinking is, uh, uh, first of all, I had never painted water. So I'm like, well, ah. i got to challenge that. <laughs> so I did that, put in the waves. And like her body is almost like a, just a rock or, or an island, you know, in, a, in the middle of the water. Uh -huh. Then with the neck, I wanted to make it a little bit longer, like a, uh, like a lighthouse or something that was on that base. And then her head is almost like the top where the light would be. Uh -huh. um, I did try to soften her up with the earrings, but I know right away you look at the at the snarl because <laughs> I had a choice of, and the mouth was the hardest part in the choice at that time because you were either going to do like a Mona Lisa, just a slight, uh, mm. no, <laughs> I wanted to give her some guts and some toughness, so right. I gave her the snarl. But if you look above that, you can see the fibers in the head and uh, it, it's like she's being constructed like a bird's nest or I ants see. with steel girders building a you know a building or something the top of her head is the iris in your eye oh. um, this is the iris of the universe so you see as the clouds come down and around this is a giant eyeball I see so I see so yeah. <laughs> basically it all comes from the question that people ask me most um, how do you come up with your ideas and I never really thought about that. So I said, I'm going to do a painting that kind of explains that. Right. So as this artist, let's say, is opening her mind to the universe, she's one because the top of her head is iris. Then you see the electricity, which is yeah. the idea. Uh -huh. Here comes the creativity and the imagery coming down for who knows where. Space comes down into your mind, shoots down your arm to your hands. And next thing you know, you're you're, you're producing, you're creating yes. something. Um, and so, yeah, so here you see the galaxy, here you see our earthly plane with the clouds, but you see they roll into one I, um, circular motion. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> How long ago did you paint this piece? Uh, it's dated on the back. I, but I, it's I been don't a, remember. a while. I'm, I'm just wondering a whether couple you... Of, a couple okay. of years, but... I, like I said, I, as soon as I do something, and I, I, you've it's forgotten a, that one. it's a yeah. short, loving, you <laughs> know, birth, yeah. and you're like, oh, you're so cute, and say, you know, but time for this one, right. <laughs> you know, well, and you start again. The reason I asked was I'm curious. Uh, you've had it long enough. I'm curious about what kind of responses you've had from audiences <laughs> who've seen it. Um, has anyone surprised you with their own interpretation of it or ask you uh, uh, insightful questions about that that kind of lined up with what you were thinking? Well, um, I only got to show it once here in Kansas. I so see. 
and mouths were dropping when I told the story. <laughs> right. And I'm thinking, well, what were you thinking before I told you what it was? He just, he'll, oh, he just likes to, you know, do women and water and sexy or something with just craziness <laughs> up on top as a floral design. No, that wasn't it. <laughs> right. Interesting. I mean, because the other question uh, that's asked is, well, how do you do it? It's uh, how do you come up with your ideas, and then, and then how do the you technical do it? Part right, of the it. technical exactly. part. So then I started a new series showing just that. That. Ah. And um, it was called uh, Tribal Fantasy, and it's a huge painting, 14 uh -huh. feet. Um, but I did it in segments, right. and I never counted on doing the next segment. It, it just happened. It just led it into just happened. it. And yeah. I think I'm going to do it the rest of my life. Sounds, and just keep adding to it. Very interesting. But it yeah. shows I left how I did everything. I leave my mistakes. Right. I'll do lines and I'll erase them, but I'll leave them just enough where you could see the them. The palimpsest, yes. Because I want to yeah. show people how I do it. Like, I think that the journey is just as important as a finished piece. Yeah. So if I can show people my mistakes, my thinking, um, ate a piece of cherry pie at 9 o'clock, you know, it's right. just random stuff on this artist's life and what he was doing. Because some people find the person just as interesting oh, as the absolutely. piece. And other people are like, oh, who cares about him? I want this, <laughs> so, you know, the, the piece of art. Well, thinking about the fact that you're always moving forward, um, there's a piece uh, behind us here that- It's brand spanking uh, new. It's brand spanking new, <laughs> and you, you told me something earlier about your relationship with landscapes. You want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, you're going to put me on the spot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I always made fun of landscapes and still life. I said, oh, that's just, uh, you know, kid stuff and boring. Who would, who would ever want to do that? Well, once you see people who are really good at it, and they have a ni lot of nice artists here, you know, in Kansas uh -huh. with still life, um, there's a whole lot of discipline in that. Yes, a great <laughs> as much deal. as anything else. Um, but nature, when you go out and you take a picture of it, or you're in it and doing it, it's it's there. Right. This is straight out of my head. Yes. I don't have anybody to help me out or give me a reference. Um, I mean, you could look at a you know picture of outer space. But a gray person, right? Yes. There's a reason why she's in black and white, uh -huh. and everything else is colored, is colored, and so is the moon, the connection, and everything. Right. So once you go into uh, you know things like this and these paintings, I'm basically maybe looking at one or two pictures just as an atmospheric, you know, landscape stuff, and I put it aside. But 90% of it is painted straight out of my head. Mm -hmm. But I have the bones and the architecture that I learned for 20 years of doing all the right. anatomy. To back me up, it's yes. it. I can just let, let's put it this way: these lights that are shining on you. If I'm looking at you, the lights are on the right side. Mm -hmm. I know your structure so well that in my mind I could shift the light to the left side and paint you with the light on the left the without having having it there. Just looking at you right now, I can put it straight up or down. I can change the light because Michelangelo always said structure controls light and light controls color. So if you know the structure, you have there's a no problem. bit of a blueprint. Yeah, well it's all about uh, the structure. You're uh, being directed. I mean if by you turned out the lights there. if you turned out the lights in here, this painting hasn't gone anywhere. Right. You, you walk across the room, you'll bump into it, it'll sure. fall over. It doesn't disappear. Other artists are stuck copying from a photo or had, have to have the model there. Mm -hmm. They're all based on direct observation. observation and my yeah. teacher was all about, this is the greatest computer in the world. Yes. If you program your mind and you learn the anatomy, it won't show, it'll show you not just how to paint a person, but how to paint everything, everything. in nature. Yeah. So I sort of you know, had a leg up on everything right. by learning it that yes. way, which I was very fortunate. I, I think you really were. That, uh, that's a rather... Uh, rare approach. Oh, we were the only yeah. uh, school that we knew of in the nation. And then when I saw computers doing renderings right. of heads, uh -huh. um, I was like, w I was doing that you did from memory 20 ago. years ago. Yeah. Like now, oh, now everyone could learn. Yeah, the mind I'm is like, the what? original model. <laughs>
We're out of time, Paul, but uh, I want to let everyone know that they can view your paintings and learn more about you on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, I'm All under right. Hardcore Artist All on right. Instagram. <laughs> hardcore I know it's a artist. bit much. Okay. Um, that just means you make your living by your art, and it's not easy or right. pretty. Um, but uh, I'm under Paul Alexander. Um, parkour artist Excellent. on Facebook. All right. Thank you very much for being with us today, and we'll see you all next time.